everybody's got to eat, so let's take a look at predation. This photo is from an ecology textbook put in there as an example of predation, but alert students notice that maybe it's not really predation since the lion is chasing a hyena, well known to be scavengers. Maybe this is competition, chasing the hyena away from the kill. In fact, with lions, though the male lion has a pride of females, it's the females that do most of the work in catching prey. Predator and prey interactions are most commonly envisioned as animals eating other animals. And these predators can range from insectivores with long appendages, noses, and snouts, and beaks that help them reach their insect prey, to carnivores, big mammals with sharp pointed teeth for tearing the flesh of their prey. But predators also have um, not just weapons, but senses and stealth, allowing them to catch their prey. Let's say the prey is the this butterfly, the ruddy daggerwing butterfly, kind of a macho sounding name. The caterpillar itself is apo is has warning coloration and stands out against the leaf, but and spines to protect it perhaps from predators. But look at the pupa below the caterpillar, green and cryptic, and then the adult itself though pretty when the wings are open, when they're closed, it looks like a dead leaf. In fact, that butterfly is an herbivore. The adult may drink nectar, the caterpillars eat leaves. So this is also a kind of predator-prey interaction. Herbivores eating plants can be included here. And for them, their prey, the plants, are easy to find. They're all around, but sometimes they're hard to eat and digest. For this purpose, many large herbivores have teeth to grind plants, large flat molars, and in their guts, helpers to help them digest the plants which are tough and full of cellulose. Looking at the skulls of several animals, you can see that they have dentition or teeth appropriate to the kind of prey they eat. The carnivore at the right, the wolf, has large canine teeth shown in green and premolars and not very well developed molars. Compare that to the deer and the horse whose diet is plants. They have well developed molars and premolars for grinding their prey. The horse has front teeth good for biting. The deer very small front teeth because they eat leaves and tender shoots. I once took a field course in northern Michigan over the summer, and the professors in the course had an alert out with the highway patrol. Any dead animals notify us, and we would come get them and dissect them. So I got to see examples of this in real or dead life. But just as teeth are appropriate, the digestive tracts of predators match the kind of prey they eat. The digestive tracts of carnivores are much shorter. For example, on the left, a cat, which is solely a meat eater, has a relatively short system of intestines, and the hindgut is also not very elaborate. Compare that with the tra digestive tract of the sheep, a grazing herbivore, which has a, a, several stomachs because it is a ruminant as well with an endosymbionts living to help it break down the plant material. But look at the length of the small intestine and the large intestine. And this little um, appendage here, this is the cecum. In human beings, this is what becomes the appendix in our di omnivorous digestive tract that sometimes can give us problems with appendicitis. I should say the purpose of the cecum is also to additionally help digestion by housing endosymbiotic bacteria. 
Many different senses can be important depending on the predator. Some predators find their, ho their pre prey by scent, such as butterflies detecting their proper host plant. In fact, those predators may see, recognize the leaf shape from a distance, but then land on it and taste the plant with their feet. That's their olfactory organs. With ants, the scent may attract them from far away to food, and dogs of course have a very are known for their sense of smell exploited by hunters to find prey for them to shoot at and law enforcers to find contraband in the airport also some predators use heat detection or infrared sight to find their prey like pit vipers seeking warm objects that might be mammals for them to eat. Here's a sulfur butterfly on the left which lays its eggs on the leaves of Bahama Cassia, also known as Sena Mexicana. And here's an ant that's found the nectary of that plant. Here's a pit viper on the left Right in back of the nares or nostrils are pits where it can sense infrared heat. And here are some potential prey items, I guess, hopefully protected in their house. Birds of prey have very well developed vision and from high in the air can see a small rustle in the grass, which would be a mouse or some little animal for them to pounce on. And cats have exceptionally good hearing. You can, If there's a little crinkle or rustle, you can see the, their ears turning toward the sound. Very good, too, to hear the can opener. And bats actually use echolocation, a kind of sonar, to see, to visualize what's around and find their food. Sometimes their prey is insects, sometimes fruit. So here's a hard-working predator taking a rest from the rat race. And some animals use electrical field detection to see what's going on. Dr. Phil Stoddard has done research for many years on electric fish and communication. The other side of this picture is how prey can avoid being eaten. They may be cryptically colored. This is called camouflage. That camouflage could be physical, the color and shape of the prey, or behavioral. They may mimic something scary or imitate certain parts of other organisms. There are many examples of this in the Lepidoptera that have eye spots on their wings hidden until they open their wings and startle the predator and certain kinds of butterflies that move their wings and fool the predator as to which end is which. Here are several cryptically colored arthropods. In the upper part A, that's a katydid, whose body looks very much like a leaf. B shows a fulgorid bug with a big peanut-shaped proboscis on its head but very well camouflaged against the bark of a tree. And C is a walking stick. You can see it's an insect here, but they often sit with all of their arms and legs parallel to the stem of a plant, and they are virtually invisible. Then there are those prey items that are toxic and advertise it. They are said to be aposematic. Aposematism is a fancy word for warning coloration. And colors that startle animals are yellow, black, and red. Probably one of the coolest examples of this, in my opinion, is that of birds that eat a monarch caterpillar. And monarch caterpillars feeding on milkweed sequester toxins from the plants, cardiac glycosides, that cause violent reactions in their predators. So that a young blue jay, for example, eating a monarch caterpillar will get really sick and throw up and 
possibly die if it's too young, but if it just gets sick and remembers, it will avoid caterpillars that look like that in the future. And also, the same goes for the butterflies, because the toxins are passed on to the adult butterflies. Here are several aposematically colored insects. On the upper left, a caterpillar with black, red, white, and yellow of a hawk moth. Below that, a cluster of aposematically colored bugs. And on the right, a group of processionary caterpillars, black, white, with red heads. Not only are chemicals and colors perhaps costly, but just avoiding predators can take a toll on prey. And here's a little study done with the larvae of bullfrogs that are eaten by both fish and larvae of dragonflies, which are predators. The activity is shown on the y-axis in the left graph. With no predators, the bullfrog tadpoles are most active. In the middle, the tadpoles on the predator side of the cage, there was a cage with a barrier that could only be traversed by the bullfrog tadpoles. The predators stayed on one side or the other. And you can see that there were many more when there were no predators present. <clears throat> but most of all, they grew much better when they didn't have to avoid either predator or both of them. Then there are many prey that actively defend themselves, like this bombardier beetle squirting acid in the face of a would-be predator. He's held on the top by a piece of string and wax for the photo.